Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to see everyone here this morning. Um, this is a beautiful time of year, isn't it? I know there's lots of folks uh, struggling with allergies of all kinds, but it's still pretty outside. And uh, it's good to see everyone here this morning. And uh, it's always, uh, we'll do that for the internet part there. <coughs> I always want to remind uh, folks concerning opportunities that we have to pray. And, uh, you know, if, the more you think about and even study the things in, that we read in the scriptures about prayer, what an awesome blessing and privilege that we have. And uh, perhaps we don't always uh, think of it uh, in those terms, but it's a, it's a great blessing that we have to be able to talk to our Father about the things that are of concern to us. Pray for one another. Uh, pray for the situations that may be going on around us that are concerned. Uh, it's a great blessing. So I encourage everyone to continue to pray. Reminder that today we're going to have a, a meal together. Always look forward to that. And uh, in, in the annex, and then we'll have our singing in here following that uh, this afternoon about 12:30. That usually gives everybody enough time to eat plenty. And um, we will not meet here uh, tonight, so uh, <clears throat> look forward to, to being able to sing with you here. Always we want to remind ourselves, praying, pray for our leaders, pray for all the leaders that, that we have in the church, in our communities, in the country, in the world. Um, there are a lot of them, and uh, they need our prayers. And uh, we, we have confidence, though, that the Lord is still in charge of all things. And uh, so, but it's good for us to, to think about these things and to, and to talk to our Father about it. Also, we're mindful of those that are in, in our brethren in other countries that are suffering persecution, real, real persecution, even to death. And we want to pray for them and for their deliverance. And also, those that we continue to support in a variety of ways in Costa Rica and India and Kenya, uh, where we know. We know people, we people that we know and love and that are working, and we want to uh, continue to pray for the success and the gospel in all those areas that we're uh, helping. And a reminder of uh, some folks that have requested uh, our prayers for them, and uh, just a couple of updates. There's more information in the bulletin for you, so make sure that you get an opportunity to read more about, about that. <coughs> Tyndall. Uh, Cohen is on uh, drills this weekend. You know, she's preparing to go to Poland for a year. Uh, and uh, we want to uh, remember Tyndall, especially in, uh, during these times. Uh, Kathy Dean, uh, she started her therapy uh, Friday, and uh, it's going well. And uh, apparently, uh, therapist, mostly in doing the evaluation, was pleased with the progress she's made so far compared to where she was uh, before the surgery and even immediately afterwards. So uh, be able to start uh, therapy in earnest soon and uh, but she's at home and doing well. She always appreciates hearing from, from all of you who uh, communicate to her in various ways. <coughs> Mike had an MRI on his shoulder Thursday and then he got follow up on that coming uh, uh, next week. Uh, talked to Roy uh, yesterday. He's he has some kind of a, a skin rash or something, but the doctor thinks it could potentially be uh, contagious. Surprised that Wanda hadn't had it, hadn't got it, and uh, but there uh, she's been trying to you know wash the bed clothes, sheets, and everything, and uh, uh, trying to keep everything clean. Uh, he still has the condition a little bit. And so there, since the doctor says contagious, of course, he didn't want to bring that here. But, uh, so probably going to follow up with the doctor next week and uh, see if it's been properly diagnosed. So uh, we want to continue <coughs> to remember Roy uh, in our prayers as well and Wanda as she's caring for him. Uh, and as I said, there are others that are mentioned in the bulletin we want to continue to remember as well. Just as a reminder, we had uh, uh, Sean Cohen was uh, baptized last week, uh, and uh, we celebrate that. Just a reminder, uh, if you were not here, 
uh, and we have a new brother in Christ. So uh, when you see him again, he's got one of those weird schedules that when you when you work and when you don't work. Uh, so let's uh, let's uh, do what we can to encourage Sean and uh, his new beginning of his new life. A reminder also that um, Elberton, the church in Elberton, actually starting today, they have uh, they call their homecoming, and uh, they will be meeting today. Ronald Cundy will be um, doing the speaking for them uh, today. They meet early in the afternoon, so we won't be able to make it there uh, today. Uh, but uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, uh, I'll just stop there. Uh, they'll meet at 7 o'clock because we meet at 7 o'clock. So. Uh, but uh, if you have opportunity, they're always very faithful to, to support us uh, in activities that we have here. Uh, they were here during our meeting with Tommy um, and other times that they can, that they can uh, support us. So we want to encourage them as well. Uh, they're a very loving, loving group of folks, and they really do appreciate the support that we can provide. So encourage it if you can uh, tomorrow night or Tuesday night, 7 o'clock uh, at Campbell Street in Elberton. Always want to remind everyone for opportunities that we have that we can meet here our Bible study on uh, Sunday night, excuse me, Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday night uh, at 7 o'clock and then our worship assemblies on Sunday at 10 and at 5. So uh, encourage everyone to be timely for all of those opportunities that we have to assemble here. And as always, um, uh, I think we do a pretty good job of keeping one another informed of situations going on around us. So uh, continue to share that information. And, uh, and I forgot to mention, uh, it's good to have Johnny with us uh, this morning. And he's continuing and uh, seeing doctors. <coughs> uh, and uh, not making near enough progress as he would see it, it suit him. But uh, continue, Johnny and, and Angie is uh, still trying to work on that uh, blood clot in her heart, whatever that might be, and uh, it's, it's still uh, a problem. So we want to continue to remember both of them in our prayers as well. This morning uh, in our singing, the first song will be uh, note from 585, Soldiers of Christ Arise. <coughs> Uh, and you may have noticed in the, the insert in the bulletin, uh, Gary's lesson is titled More Like the Devil. <coughs> He'll be able to justify that. Uh, so it's, uh, you don't need to pay close attention. But um, uh, one of the things that we know from the scriptures is that uh, we need to do, even as Tommy was was pointing out in his lessons, we need to do all that we can to resist the devil. Even, uh, even as Paul encouraged the church at Ephesus, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. And the words of this song remind us of this, uh, the words that Paul recorded for us. And so let us encourage one another that uh, we might continue uh, to fight as good soldiers of Christ. Soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armor on. Strong in the strength which God supplies. Strong in the strength which God supplies through His beloved Son. Strong in the Lord.
opportunity for our contribution this morning. We've been commanded on the first day of the week, and we are commanded, but I always take the great joy that I've been blessed with so much that we give back to this, uh, this whole family of, of God and continue to work that He wants us to do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for everything that we have, all that we, all that we are. We thank you for this small group of yours, this family that's striving to do your will and spread the word in this community. We thank you for the leadership of the elders, the deacons, all of us that support us. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless everything that we can give this morning heartfelt as we contribute to continue your work. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. song is at number nine, A Wonderful Savior. In Psalm 91, the psalmist wrote, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. And John reminded us in 1 John 4, we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to, to be the Savior of the world. Uh, the words of this song remind us truly what a wonderful Savior we have, and there's far more that can be said in Scripture and in even in words uh, as we honor our Savior and as we worship him, and uh, honoring him as truly a wonderful Savior for us. After we sing uh, this song together, then uh, Dean is going to lead us in prayer. <clears throat> A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the He hideth my life in the depths 
heaven, we thank you for all the blessings you give us in life. We thank you for your son who died upon that cruel cross so that we may be faithful Christians. And we are thankful for his body, the church, which we are part of. And we pray that you'll bless us as we go through each and every day that we may strive to serve you and to have a heart of good cheer knowing that you are there for us and that you will always bless us. And we pray that you'll help us as we pray to you to know the things that we should do and the things that we should change in our lives. That if there be anything that is a strain in our life or something that we need to learn, that you'll help us as we go through this life. We pray that you'll watch after all those who have been mentioned that are sick. We have many uh, in this congregation who are going through illnesses, and we pray that you'll help us to strive to serve you as we go through these illnesses and to realize that even if in this life we can't overcome some of the things we go through, that in the next life we will be free of all tears and all pain and all anguish that may be in our life and that we'll have no frail body as we have on this earth and we'll be with you. Please bless us as we realize the needs of this congregation and the needs of this community that we may be able to reach out and help those around about us. Most of all, help us to teach others and to realize the importance of being saved. And there are many throughout this area and throughout the world that are lost. And we need to be part of as many lives as we can who are lost that we may help them to realize the need to serve you. Watch after the foreign mission field that they may be blessed, especially those who are going through trials and tribulations at this time because of the teaching of the gospel. And watch after us as we strive to do your will that this congregation may grow and mature and add numbers to us because we are faithful and because others choose to be faithful. And we pray that you'll help us to do those things. Watch after the eldership and help them to continue to feed us as we should be and that we may be able to do those things which are pleasing to you. Thank you for all that we had. Watch after us and watch after Gary as he brings us to lesson that we'll be attentive to those things that need to be said and those things which we need to learn. Thank you for giving us such able-bodied people in this congregation to do the things that we need to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we take to the Lord's Supper together, we'll sing, uh, O Sacred Head, it's number 484. about some of the things that Peter recorded for us. Um, while he doesn't quote specifically from Psalm, uh, excuse me, from Isaiah 53, there are several references in his letter there that reminds us of the things that are written there. For example, in chapter 2, beginning of verse 23, it said, When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. And while that's, that's not a quote from Isaiah 53, we can see by inspiration the, the things that are recorded there in, by the prophet, as Peter is reminding us of these things concerning our Savior. And he, we truly have a, a blessing to be able to remember that sacrifice that he made for us each first day of the week. As we uh, remember the sacrifice he made, that he gave his body, that he sacrificed his blood, that he gave his life, and that by his blood we're redeemed, uh, that we might be purged of our sins, forgiven. Uh, there's just so many things that we can think about uh, concerning the sacrifice that Jesus made for us and to do it uh, every week is almost not often enough. I know that we think about these things sometimes daily, uh, but as we partake of the, the bread and the cup, we're reminded 
of the sacrifice that Jesus made. So let us examine ourselves uh, as we partake together. Mike, if you will, give thanks for your help. Can you offer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup with reference to the Son's blood that was spilt for the remission of our sins. That those who take this cup and do it in the pleasure of mine and thee, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Mary's lesson, we'll sing uh, number, song number 34, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? A question for each of us as we continue in examining ourselves. Uh, Peter again recorded for us, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Jude, in, uh, in his letter, he said, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Uh, the purpose of Jude's writing was to appeal to those that he was writing to and to us that we might continue to con contend for the faith, to be strong in the faith and to stand up for it, to fight for it. And the so words of this song uh, is a question for us to examine ourselves, am I a soldier of the cross? And uh, hopefully all of us can say yes, indeed we are. And therefore, we have responsibilities in that in that vein. If it's convenient for you, would you stand with me while we sing together? Am I a soldier of the cross of power? First, for uh, the, uh, the elders allowing me to uh, to travel away for a little bit, and uh, I was disappointed. We, I went away for work uh, to, to Charleston. There were actually no round tables there. I was looking for like King Arthur type thing, but it was all just a big U-shaped table. Was, but I, I was I was able to, to be there and survive anyway. Uh, but also uh, speaking of the elders, I, and and I know it's been a little bit since we we've, we've had the uh, the meeting. But I didn't get to say a whole lot after since I left right after it. But thanks to them for bringing Tommy in. Uh, great, great lessons and encouragement. And, of course, if, if you weren't able to be here, uh, most of the lessons are online on our Facebook page or, or YouTube page. If you get a chance, take a look at those. And I, I you probably ask around for the, uh, the Tuesday that's missing. Uh, but... Uh, but it, it, just the incredible lessons, he, he does a great job. But uh, of course, while I was gone, I also had somebody uh, fill in for me. So uh, thank you, Bob, for, uh, for doing that. And I, I enjoy your lessons. And well, it seems I'm always gone when you, uh, when you preach. So uh, I need to sneak back in from time to time. But thank you very much. And, uh, of course, thank you for uh, most of you for being very excited about me being back. I won't mention Sid by name for <clears throat> any other comments that might have been made to the contrary. But uh, I, I missed you guys. I uh, really missed being here. And uh, very excited to, to be back. And we'll get to hang out with you this afternoon and talk with our mouths full. 
But we are uh, talking about being more like the devil, and uh, I think uh, Steve was a little worried about me. Uh, maybe I was gone too long or something and was coming back with a title like that. I told him I, I probably had too much deviled crap while I was gone. But um, it's, uh, it, you know, it's one of those things where uh, there, there are some things about the devil that um, he does well that are really, really bad. And I hate him for it. But there are also some things that uh, though he does well, that uh, some of these qualities that he has, well, we need to have them as well. And so what I want to do is look at some of those things that uh, he does that we also can do that aren't going to be contrary to what God wants us to do. And, uh, and that, <laughs> Uh, Steve was, uh, you know, it's like, wait, wait a minute, uh, more like the devil. Aren't people like that too much already? Isn't that the whole thing? It, we're going to pick out the good ones, the, the, the good parts uh, that we need to be able to make sure we incorporate in our lives. And, again, there, there's a few things. That I, I, I didn't pick every single thing, but we, we we're going to look at, at some. But uh, one of the things that we need to be you know, more like the devil is in our preparation. And looking at, uh, well, he is uh, prepared uh, to attack at all times. And well, we are the recipients of, of those attacks. Uh, Paul talked about being uh, prepared uh, in Ephesians chapter 6. So we won't go into the whole discussion, but again, this, this idea of putting on the whole armor of God. Uh, he says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all, to stand firm. And so we, we've talked about this before. Again, he, he mentions uh, multiple times you know, putting on the whole armor of God. Uh, don't just pick out your favorite pieces and put them on. Uh, can you imagine running into a battle and uh, taking most of your stuff with you? Well, where is the enemy going to attack? Where you don't have the rest of your armor with you. And so, uh, well, the devil is prepared uh, to attack and prepared to know exactly how the armor works even if we aren't. He knows uh, how it's uh, best used. He, he knows, of course, uh, we, we saw with, uh, uh, with Jesus, when he was uh, tempting Jesus, he was able to use the word of God, throwing it back at Jesus and say, see, even God says this. And, of course, uh, Jesus used it correctly and put him in his place. But we look at Ephesians uh, 6, again, just the next verse there, verse number 14. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and his shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Again, are we prepared? And we look at, again, this, uh, you know, we've, we've got the truth, we've got God's righteousness, uh, and, and then are we wearing the right shoes? And I'm, you know, I'm not talking about... Uh, hokas or clouds or whatever else that uh, people uh, want to put on their feet. Do we have the gospel ready? Uh, the, the, the gospel of peace? Do we have that uh, ready to use? Because when Satan attacks and again we're, we're saying when because he is going to he is constantly if we aren't prepared, we're going to lose. And God has given us every single thing that we need to be prepared. We just have to make sure that we take advantage of that. The devil has taken advantage of the opportunity to be able to prepare. He's had a lot of time to do it. I, I've used the... Uh, 
picture up here uh, before uh, that's one of those things that pops up every once in a while at, at work that uh, here, here's how we can get something done well the first thing you do is, is, is make the plan again we don't normally just go into something and say hey let's just try something give me an idea we'll go ahead and start now we, we normally you know I know this is hard to believe we have meetings at a lumber company. I, I thought we just sold uh, uh, building materials, but evidently we, we're also a meeting company. Uh, but we plan for things. Well, then we gotta do something with those plans. And then uh, once we start working on those plans, did it work? We gotta check it to make sure, because just because we're doing something doesn't make it right. Maybe it has uh, a reaction that we weren't expecting. Uh, you can ask that with the, uh, the fine folks at, at Bud Light. They uh, created a plan, they did it, and now they are checking and taking some action once they did their checking uh, to try to uh, fix whatever problems might have come up from the plan that they did. That's no different with us. There is some preparation that needs to go into uh, what we're doing. And, well, we got a future that we're striving for. And we can't just kind of float along and, and follow along with the rest of the world. It seems to be going okay. Uh, we'll just kind of move along with them. God gave us a plan. to help prepare to fight against the devil, to help prepare to live in heaven for all eternity, to help prepare to stay out of hell for all eternity. Where are we at with being prepared? In Luke chapter uh, 16, uh, Jesus gave an example of uh, somebody who was being dishonest. so that he could be prepared. Uh, he also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management where you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, what shall I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do. So that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their house. So summoning his master's debtors, one by one, he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of oil. He said, take your bill, sit down quickly, and write 50. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said, take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. Here he was, he was about to get fired. What am I going to do? I'm, I don't want to dig ditches. I'm, I'm not going to go out and stand on the street corner and, and just, just beg for money. So what, what do I need to do? I, I know what I'll do. I'll go talk to uh, my customers or my uh, former boss's customers and uh, you know, before I get completely canned and I'm going to fix it up where they'll love me. And so that way, when I am kicked to the curb, I got a place to go, even if I'm just couch surfing with these uh, new friends that I'm about to have. And so he takes their bill and says, okay, listen, you owe all this great, let, let's just cut that in half. Let's cut a, a pretty big chunk out of it. Let me give you a coupon, buddy. Maybe asking for a favor later. Uh, uh, he needed a place to say, I'm going to be prepared for when this happens. And Jesus said, well, the, you know, the dishonest folks of this world, well, they're, they're shrewd. But they are prepared. Are we? 
we aren't about to get fired. But Hebrews 9.27 reminds us that we're going to die and face judgment. Are we doing whatever it takes to make sure that we are prepared for that, knowing that that's going to happen? God wants us to be. We see in Matthew uh, chapter 24, verse 36, this reminder of, hey, don't forget, this is going to happen. Concerning that day and hour, no one knows. Again, this is uh, uh, Matthew 24 and 25. When, uh, in, at the beginning of chapter 24, the disciples were showing in the temple, and, and uh, Jesus let them know that, uh, well, there wasn't going to be one stone left on the other. They, they were thinking, okay, this has got to be talking about the end of the world. When, when's the end of the world happening? Verse number 36, nobody knows. God knows. But nobody here knows when that's coming. But it is. Not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came, swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord's coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. Now, therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Are we always prepared for his return? Since out of his own mouth, we, we don't know when it's going to happen. We don't have any signs now. The world would love to just feed us all these signs and every time something bad happens, so see, see, here's a sign. Well, we've been seeing signs for the last 2,000 years. So eventually somebody's going to be right. <laughs> Uh, because, well, eventually he's coming. We don't know when that is. So, his encouragement to us is be prepared. The devil is constantly prepared for us. We need to be prepared for him. We need to be, be prepared for our eternal life. We need to be prepared to defend the gospel. We need to be prepared to teach the gospel. And then there's more. We need to be more like the devil in our performance. It goes beyond just planning. It goes beyond just being prepared. Well, somebody's got to do something with it. Well, that's that's us. And again, we look at the, at the devil. He doesn't uh, stop when he gets a good plan, he said, this is great. I've got a great plan. Now I'm going to do nothing with it. He puts his plan into play. And his plan is to make sure we don't make it to heaven. His plan is to fight against God and his people. His plan is to have a lot of company as he is in torment in hell for all eternity. What about us? Again, when, when it comes to all these things that we are to do as Christians, uh, the, the benevolence, the uh, edification, the evangelism, these things that, that we're doing, that this uh, encouraging each other to, to helping the poor, uh, to teaching the gospel, to all, all these things. Uh, do we make a plan and say, this is what I'm going to do? Eventually. One day. Well, I'll start tomorrow. And then I can start tomorrow the next day. Do we actually perform what God wants us to be performing? Uh, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 8, uh, Paul encouraging the Christians there in the city of Corinth uh, to perform. 
I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And in this manner I give my judgment, this benefits you, who a year ago started not only to do this work, but also to desire to do it. So now finish doing it as well so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. Don't just really want to be a Christian. Don't just really want to be faithful. Don't just really want to be, to be loving and kind and forgiving. And Finish it. Do it. It's not in the uh, scriptures anywhere, but uh, the, the concept is you know, that the world has this saying of uh, uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We could turn that into good plans, good thoughts, well-meaning. Can you imagine making it there to Judgment Day and... and here is uh, God explaining you, this is what you're supposed to be doing, and I don't see evidence of it. I thought about it. It's a thought that counts, right? Well thought, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy Lord. Is not anything that we find in the scriptures. The devil is active, constantly, are God's people. We should be. We need to be more like the devil in our persistence. Again, he's always on. He's always active. Even if he's rejected. He doesn't uh, give up after uh, being defeated. And again, I, I mentioned Steve a lot. That doesn't have anything to do with the topic here. But we were, we were again, talking about the topic of this particular uh, lesson. He, was, he, he said it reminded him of a, a story that he heard. He said there was a lady in the, in the congregation who always had something good to say about anyone. Someone decided to put her to the test and asked her to say something good about Satan. Well, after a short pause, she replied, He's persistent. He keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. Okay, that's a good quality for the wrong reason for him. But, boy, do we need that. Luke 4, verse 13, again, when, when Satan was tempting Jesus, Jesus won. And, and again, Satan was trying to, to twist the scriptures to, uh, to benefit himself and not Jesus, even though he was selling it as that. And finally, when he figured out, I'm not going to win this round, it says, uh, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. And, and some people may read that as, okay, the devil ended every temptation. So, so Jesus had it easy after that because the devil wasn't really bothering him for the rest of the time that he was there. That's not what it says. He left him for a little while. But he came back. Until an opportune time. I mean, here he is trying to tempt the Son of God, the creator of the entire universe. And he is trying to get him to do something wrong. And he loses. And then he comes back. Who knows how many times in the span of his life here on earth. You know he's coming back to us. If taking on the Son of God doesn't scare him, Taking on God's people isn't going to scare him either. He comes back, he comes back, he comes back, 
And I know every single one of us has seen it. What about us? I'm going to do the right thing and suffer the consequences. I'm going to do the right thing again, and I know I'm going to suffer the consequences. I'm going to go and have a conversation with somebody and, and be rejected. I'm going to go back and have another conversation with that same person and going to be rejected. But I want to keep doing what God wants me to do. This persistency that we see from the devil, uh, you know, the, one of the descriptions that Peter gives there, he's prowling like a, 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 a lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I just, you know, how many lions do you see? You know, you know I, I remember watching Wild Kingdom, uh, you know, as a, as a kid. Uh, they're still online. It's, it's uh, pretty good if you haven't seen it before. But, uh, again, uh, these uh, big cats chasing after these, uh, uh, you know, wildebeest or something. That's the original fast food. And uh, they go after, and sometimes they don't get them. Sometimes, uh, you know, you get the nice claw across the back and knocks them down. They hop up and go, and they're hungry because they, they didn't get them. And, and can you imagine just a lion just sitting there shaking and saying, well, I guess I'm going to die. I didn't get that one, and so I, that's it. I'm going to starve to death. I mean, we know what they do. They go out for dinner again. They, they go in and find something or someone to eat because they're hungry. They're persistent, just like the devil, just like God's people. No matter how many times we scatter seed, even though we know most of the time, It's not going to grow. The world rejects God and his word over and over and over again. But we're encouraged and commanded to still scatter the seed, to still have those conversations, to still teach the gospel. You got uh, Luke 11 uh, and uh, verse number 5. Uh, he, says, uh, Jesus said, he said to them, which of you has a friend who will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And... Impudence is not one of the words I normally use. Um, brazenness, boldness, nerve, gall. He, he was there asking him for something, again, that he was going to be able to keep asking him until he got what he wanted because, well, he had boldness, he had nerve. And so Jesus says that that's why he's going to get what he's asking for. Because of his boldness, his nerve, impudence. We have the uh, story of the woman who was uh, going to the judge and asking over and over and over again for justice for her. We have Jesus, uh, the perfect example, showing up on the scene, different towns, uh, different people, seeing the same reaction where, yes, you've done something great. That's awesome. Now, how can we kill you? And instead of uh, cowering in fear, he shows up again day after day after day doing the exact same thing because, well, he was persistent in his love of doing God's will. We see the, uh, the apostles after Jesus has gone, the church is established, and again, showing up over and over again, doing God's will, facing persecution, facing death. And they came back time and time and time again. Do we have that kind of persistence or, well, we were rejected. I guess there's nothing else I can do. They said they didn't like me now. So I guess 
I don't really want to lose all my friends, so I won't say anything else about it at all. And lots of other types of examples that we could use. Where is our persistence level? Are we devil-like with our persistence level? <laughs> we need to be more like the devil in our persuasion. Because he is extremely persuasive in, in spite of something that is uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, there, there are people that know exactly what the consequences of sin are going to be. And they still succumb to the temptation. That may be some people in this very room. That, that may be, uh, you know, somebody standing in front of you. We've been tempted in sin, even though we know exactly what sin gets us. Death, separation from God eternity in hell. That is some powerful persuasion. Some don't care. Some aren't, aren't really worried about that. Some just see the here and now. But he uses his power of persuasion to convince people to do wrong. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and, and verse 12 of what am I doing I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And, and no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of, un, uh, servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Sometimes the persuasion is, hey, look at what the Bible says. Oh, it's hard to understand. Let me just explain it to you. So that way you don't have to worry about reading it. I'm going to tell you what it says. All you have to do is believe this one little fact. And you can do anything you want after that. God's got to take care of it. Don't worry about it. You can talk about how awesome God is. You have the, the uh, you know, the T-shirt that, that says, I, I love God. You have uh, the bumper stickers that say, follow you to a particular church. Uh, you go to, to all kinds of Bible classes. You have all kind of, of love for God. And do anything that the world throws out at you, because that's okay. God's got you. He's going to wipe away all that, that sinful life. That, the, what other people would call sin, you, you don't have to worry about that. That's just going to bounce right off of you. And, and people soak it up. I feel okay about that because my preacher said it was okay. That is deceitful persuasion. And the devil's love it every minute of it. Matthew chapter 7 and, and verse 15, uh, Jesus warns us, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. And, and we've talked about this when we've looked at Matthew before. And, you know, there's a, you know, if I'm going to go work for the state of Georgia, I'm going to be a, a fruit inspector. I'm going to be trained. I, I'm, I'm going to be able to, to look at uh, this uh, red delicious uh, apple and be able to see that's exactly what a red delicious apple should look like. And, uh, you know, there's only, you know, one worm in it. Uh, two worms is bad. One worm's okay. Or whatever the rules are, I, I would know because I would be trained in, in what that fruit is supposed to look like. Jesus said we're fruit inspectors. And thankfully, he has given us everything that we need to know to know what it takes to be a fruit inspector. And so if the fruit looks like the world... 
Well, that is bad fruit. No matter what the outside looks like, no matter what's coming out, if, if the actions are wrong, it's wrong. But we need to know that. See, we, we've got the truth. We should be able to be extremely persuasive because we have the good news. We have the gospel. We have the truth about who God is, who Jesus is, what he's done for us, what he expects of us. We have the instruction manual to be able to go to them. And again, sometimes we can't persuade people because they don't want to be persuaded. Well, that goes back to persistence. We still need to have this same message out there and try to persuade people again, not by how awesome a person I am or uh, by how eloquently I speak or whatever other type of uh, method there is to try to draw people in. Free giveaways. Here, get your, get your free t-shirt here. Here's a, you know, a, a, a carnival to go attend. Here's uh, whatever it is. We've got the truth. That's where the power of God is. That's given to us to be able to use to persuade other people to follow the gospel. 2 Corinthians 5 and, and verse 11. Paul says, uh, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it's known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what's in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. For if we are in our right mind, it's for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this. That one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all. That those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. We, well, we've got the truth. We've read the book. We know how this all ends. We need to make sure first we are persuading ourselves to live righteously, to do right. But also that same persuasion we can use on others as well. We know how this ends. Uh, 2 Peter 3 and, and verse 11, since all these things are thus to be dissolved, everything around us is going to be gone. The, the universe is going to be gone. What sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? <coughs> Waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. Peter's encouragement. Listen, you, you know how this is going to go. You know eventually this is all going to be gone. We're going to be gone. How should you be living your life? If we're riding down the road and we see a bridge out, are we going to uh, stop and warn people as they come, hey, don't, don't go any further than this. The bridge is out. You're going to die. Of course, we, we do as much as we could to, to warn people. Something worse than a bridge being out is happening. Are we warning? Luke 14, uh, again, we have the uh, parable of the, this uh, feast and the invitees are not attending and so the master said to the servant go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled for I tell you none of those who were invited shall taste my banquet where are we looking to uh, persuade how, how far are we looking because we don't have to go very far to find people to encourage, to teach, to share, to persuade. God went all the way to find us. 
his plan for, for me, and for you, I'm going to persuade them by sending my son to die on the cross. I'm going to show them how much I love them and show them how much I hate sin. His love, his message, this truth persuaded us. It can do the same thing for others. But it takes us doing more than sitting back. It takes us to be as persuasive as the devil is. Again, we've we've got the truth. John eight thirty two. Uh, Jesus said, "We shall know the truth, and the truth shall shall make you free." We have uh, a freedom from sin. We have that freedom from from the one thing that's going to keep us out of heaven, and it's the truth. Uh, John chapter seventeen, when Jesus was praying for his disciples, praying for us. To sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. We have it. We even have multiple copies of it. We can go in, in our in our homes and get uh, uh, books off the shelf. We can uh, pick up our phone, look on our computers, and we have the truth just all around us. Do we know it? Are we using it? Are we sharing it? Because there's God's powerful weapon. Are we using the truth to be prepared to do what God wants us to do? Do we move from being prepared to actually performing the commandments of God? Are we persistently persistent in our efforts? Do we work to persuade others of the truth so they too may be obedient to the gospel? <coughs> because we know as well as the truth of the gospel, the truth is the devil is active. And he is working, working to help people lose their soul. He's working on us. He's working on the world. If we aren't working as hard as he is, or harder, well then, we're in danger of losing our soul. Sitting back, hoping the world gets it by somebody else. Sitting back, thinking, uh, well, I, I know what to do as a Christian, but that's uh, that belongs to somebody else. They'll take care of that. We are the church. If we aren't active, we're losing we're going to sing a song uh, called When Jesus Comes. And just, again, this is a, this is a song to us. We're, we're, we're singing uh, to encourage each other to, to be active, uh, to, to work as Christians. But, I mean, just looking at these lines, and, and don't worry, I'll, I'll go back and we'll, we'll catch them again uh, in tune. But uh, when Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night, Faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright. Oh, can we say we are ready, brother? Ready for the soul's bright home? Say, will he find you and me still watching, waiting, waiting when the Lord shall come? And so I know the words to say, faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps. In your head, as we're singing this again to encourage each other also, we need to be singing to ourselves. Faithful to him will he find me watching with my lamps all trimmed and bright. Oh, can I say I'm ready, brother? Ready for the soul's bright home. Are we ready? Are we active? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Because the devil is absolutely active. But he cannot be active enough to make us lose our home in heaven. It is still our choice. Are we going to be obedient to the gospel or not? And then continue beyond just the hearing the word of God and believing in Jesus as the son of God and and repenting, turning our life around, confessing the, the name of Jesus and the fact that he is a son of God 
and then being baptized, have our sins washed away. And then it goes on to then staying active. So that when time does run out, either our time or the world's time, we'll be ready. If there's something that we can do to help encourage you to be ready, to get rid of sin out of your life, that's one of the reasons we're here, to help each other out. Help us help you. If there's something this morning that will help, we'd love to be able to help with that, even now as we stand and sing. When Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night, faithful to him will we find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright. Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright home? Say that were made earlier, especially those that we need to remember in our prayers. And uh, check up on them, see what we can do to help one another. Uh, Johnny's going to lead us in our closing prayer. We'll also offer thanks for the food that we're uh, about to participate in. And also just a request, uh, we have the annex set up for uh, our assembly for worship because uh, we had to use it a couple of nights during the meeting, so we're going to need some help getting some tables set up. Appreciate your help for that. Let's pray together, John. Everybody, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and for this many blessings, Father. We thank you for the lesson that Gary brought to us this morning that would keep our minds working toward you, Father. Father, we pray and thank you for each and every one that is here. We pray that you, that you will study with people, that you try to correct them from their wrong ways if it's possible, Father. Father, we thank you for our missionaries on foreign souls. We pray that you will look over them, Father, and they will stand fast for thee. Father, we pray for the, our nation here, Father, for our leaders, 
are so messed up, Father, that we pray that they will see the light that they too will recognize that we're leading their country in the wrong ways. Father, we pray, that, Father, that you will help us to always look to thee for guidance. Father, we thank you for each and every one here. We pray that you will be able to stay with us for the lunch that is prepared in the annex, Father. We pray that you will help us to stand fast in your Father, we love each and every one. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.